one. Assalamu alaikum. Well, as I was working on this design, I found that this text over here is expandable text, which means if you click on this, it'll show you more text. Uh, in general, it will hide the rest of the text, but on click, they will show the more text. And uh, um, so I decided to share with you guys how to make an expandable text widget, okay? Well, right now I have this uh, app over here, and uh, this is the screen. Now here I want to show some text, okay? All right, now as I want to show the text, I want to call the text widget from here, or the text, okay? So I also want to make, um, pass the text from here, but of course right now it's an empty container, but we want to build a text widget and we'll pass the widget and then Based on that, we'll achieve the result where we can expand the text, okay? All right, so that's what we want to do. Well, to do that, we need to create a file. Okay, so I created a Dart file. I call it expanded widget. Okay, so here I'll create a stateful class, okay? Now I'll call it expanded, uh, say, widget, okay? So that's what I'll call it, all right? Okay, now over here, I guess we need to import some of the libraries. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, now one thing that we need with this uh, widget, definitely we want to pass a text from here, right? So we'd be able to grab the text over here. And to do that, we need to declare a variable over here. And it would be definitely a, tech, a string type variable because we'll pass, uh, uh, we'll pass a string or text from here to this widget, okay? Now we need to take care of some other things. Uh, we need to initialize it within the constructor. So here I'll call it this, and then we need to use the required keyword. Okay, all right, so, so far so good. All right, so now as the text is being passed, so I want to grab it over here um, within this, and then I will pass it down to this container. So over here, I will just simply go ahead and call a text widget and uh, I'll simply just show the text. All right, to do that, I'll call it widget text, this one. Because this is a stateful widget, so the variables uh, that is uh, passed from other widgets or other classes, if you want to access them, you need to use the widget keyword. All right, so what we could do now, we could go ahead and call this uh, expanded widget, this class, and uh, we'll pass a text, okay? So now here, what I'll do, I'll just simply call expanded widget, and over here we have text, and we need to pass text, all right? And make sure it's imported, I think it's imported. So I'll just put any random text for now, all right? So it's a really, really long text, okay? So I'll go ahead and run it, and we see the text, but of course, is it too long? We don't want to show that much text over here, all right? Now regarding this expanded and single child scroll view, I have another tutorial. If you don't know what is that, um, check that out. But here our focus is how to make this text expandable and uh, collapsible, okay? Well, of course, so this is what we are passing and we are grabbing it and we are showing it here. But once again, we don't want to show this complete text. We want to show it half of it or any part of it, okay? All right, so we can... Diff we can do that on our own, so we can uh, create some conditions for that. And to do that, first we'll override a function over here, which is called init state function, which is a function of uh, stateful class. So here I would call init state and uh, super dot init. Uh, I'm sorry, super dot init state. All right. Okay. Let's see what do we have here. Oh, I need to move this within this one. Okay, all right. Okay, so here we'll declare two variables. We we'll do late string first half and late string second half. Well, why we did that? Because we want to split our text in two sections, the first half and second half. Well, it doesn't have to be first half. It could be any amount or any number of letters, okay? Just a name over here. So we, we get this text, and based on that, we want to 
um, separate them in two sections okay and we do it during initialization of this class so here we can do a conditional check we could do if widget dot um, text dot length okay so whatever the text we are passing here we can get the length of it and say for example we want to get first 150 letters based on that we do something so if the text is more than 150 we want to split it to two different sections okay all right so now in the first half we'll save first half of this text and how to do that well we can just simply call widget dot text dot substring now every string variable has a function that we can call that is called substring and it takes uh, two parameters and if you hover over on it you will see that start and end so our starting is zero which means very first one the first index and say we want to finish at 150 okay so whatever the text you supply and based on that text if you call the function substring and you mention the limitation beginning and end it will keep only those part from the supplied or applied text and put it in this variable where you want to save it okay so we have this whole long text so 150 maybe from here to say from here so it'll keep that and put over here okay all right and for second half what we'll do we'll do the pretty much same thing but we'll just change the range range of this substring so over here we want to start from 151 to rest of the text so say for example 0 to 150 is over here now 151 should be from here and now rest of the text so rest of the text is the text length okay so that's what we'll put over here so this is how we we are able to divide whatever the text is given if the text length is 150 certain length it could be any length it doesn't matter it, it you can change this based on your requirement okay so based on that we divide it into two sections why we do that because first if the text is really too long we'll just show the first half and once we click on a button we'll show the second half together with the first half okay so that's why we are doing it here so anyway if the text is more than 150 we do this check uh, check otherwise actually we don't want to do because that means the applied or given text is really not long okay so in that case uh, for first half we'll use whatever the text was given okay all right and the second half would be empty all right so that's what we did so hopefully it makes sense all right now based on this um, right now we can do a check over here how to do that so we'll see if the text is really long if the text is more than 150 or not how do you do that we can use this one if the text is more than 150 second half is not empty if it is less than 150 second half is empty that's what we did so we we'll do over here second half dot length equal null okay so if it is null that means the text is really not long that means we are falling in this condition okay in that case this condition would be true and we will show the text over here while the given text or the first half it doesn't really matter you can use first half over here or the given text otherwise okay we'll use over here uh, say the complete text what is the complete text this is the complete text just let's go ahead and check it out okay uh, so over here you will see that nothing changed but we are falling back to this condition over here okay all right uh, or say if the text is really long we want to show the first half this first half okay over here that means second half is not empty let's go ahead and try it okay as you see so this is the first half we are seeing all right okay 
So because the second half is not empty, that means the, the text is long. In that case, we are getting the first half from here. Okay. All right. So hopefully it makes sense. So we are, we are all doing it based on this variable. Okay. All right. So if the text is short, we are using whatever the text we get over here. Okay. All right. So now so far so good. Okay. So what do we want to know? We want to be able to create a button over here and uh, click on the button and show the rest of the text. So that also means that this text and button has to be in column. So what is this text? This text is this one. Okay. So this text and button should be in column. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and cut this and over here create a column uh, widget and within it, sorry, within it we'll have children and within children we'll have this first text. Okay. All right. And then what I'll do, I'll create a button. In our case, the button would be a text. So here I would do show more. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and click. We see this one. So this is the button. But now, of course, we can change the layout. Okay, so this is the color. But at the same time, we want to create, show an arrow button, just like this design, we see an arrow button, okay? All right, so now if we have an arrow button, this text and arrow button would be in a row. So what I would do, I would go ahead and cut this. And I'll create a row widget over here. Now I'll put this one, and then I'll create an icon over here. So icon, icons dot. I think we need to import the library. Okay, so icons dot arrow uh, key. It's a keyboard uh, arrow. I think keyboard arrow down. This is the icon we want to use, and the color we want to use the same color. So I'll put it right there. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's what we have. So now, well, of course, our text is still hiding and if we click on this, it doesn't work. So we want this row, this text and this icon should be clickable, right? Within this column. So what I could do, I could go ahead and cut this one and I'll here use a clickable widget. I can use inkwell, okay? Now it takes a child and child would be our row, whatever we had over here. Now it has an on tab button, so that's what we'll use. Okay, and we'll just simply print over here, tapped for now, okay? So I'll start from the beginning. Let's see if the tap button is not is working or not. So I'll tap on this, as you see, we can see that it's working. So we tapped on it, right? So the tap button is definitely working. Okay, so so far so good. But now what do you want? Based on this tap, we want to show the rest of the text, okay? Now here we we need to set up a variable whether we are tapping it or not to know that okay so that's why what we could do we can come over here and here we'll declare a variable we'll call it bool and we'll call it flag and default condition is true okay all right so over here if it is true whatever it is because this is a default condition we can use it and uh, Okay, so based on the tap, I mean, this is the tap, right? So we can change here. So how do we change? Um, whatever the uh, current variable is that, we'll take that one and we'll do a negation, okay? So every time we click on this, we'll get the opposite value, okay? All right, and uh, we need to put it inside set state. Sorry, set state, okay? So now we get we would get the updated flag value. So if it's currently true, if I click on this, it would be false. Okay. So anyway, so now what is the default value of this that is true? Okay. So if flag say flag if flag true, we show the first one. Okay. Otherwise, we show the whole text. Okay. Whole text is this one. All right, so we'll show this one. 
to we would put it over here simply okay all right now let's go ahead and check okay now let's click on this yes we show the whole text right it's working now you click on this it'll hide it you click on this it'll show you all right so that's how you create this uh, uh, expandable text over here all right so hopefully it makes sense um, what else uh, well of course we can change this one this icon based on this flag button okay so because it is changing so based on that if it is true we show this one so check it so okay it's changing all right okay so that's how you create expandable text widget so hopefully you learned something by the way now if you want it to be scrollable at the same time you need to use this kind of con uh, widget over here but i have explained more detail in another tutorial check that out thank you